Imagine a world where an asteroid hadn't wiped out the dinosaurs. What if 65 million years ago an asteroid never hit Earth and the dinosaurs, the original apex predators of the planet, never got wiped out of existence? What would have happened? How will it affect the rest of us? When a 15,000 or 9 mile wide asteroid slammed into Earth 65 million years ago, it struck the planet with a force equivalent to about 10 billion Hiroshima bombs. A radioactive fireball seared everything for hundreds of miles in every direction and created tsunamis that sped halfway across the globe. Even the atmosphere started to burn. No land animal more than 25 kilograms would have survived the carnage. When it was all said and done, around 75% of all species became extinct. The non-avian dinosaurs never had a chance, and only the small feathered flying dinosaurs, we know today as birds, made it out alive. But what if history had taken a different course? What if the asteroid had missed or arrived a few minutes earlier? For this, let's turn to the experts for their educated opinions. Many scientists argue that if the asteroid had arrived mere moments earlier or later, rather than hitting the shallow waters of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula, it would have plunged into the deep sea of the Pacific or Atlantic Oceans absorbing some of the force and limiting the expulsion of the sulfur-rich sediments that choked the atmosphere for months or years ahead. If that had happened instead, there would still have been a catastrophe and extinctions, but some larger dinosaurs may have survived. With this hypothesis, considering this alternate reality becoming true, how would everything else turn out? How would it affect us? Well, some researchers argue that even without the asteroid, the dinosaurs may already have been ending I take a slightly unorthodox view that dinosaurs were doomed anyway because of cooling climates, says Mike Benton, a paleontologist at the University of Bristol in the UK. They had just about held their own to the end of the Cretaceous, but we know that mammals were diversifying and dinosaurs had already been declining for 40 million years. Benton believes mammals would still have replaced the dinosaurs. Other experts take a very different view. Carnivorous dinosaur researcher Tom Holtz at the University of Maryland in College Park, United States, agrees that there would have been some extinctions 66 million years ago anyway, due to eruptions and massive lava flows at the Deccan Traps in India. But, he says, there's nothing otherwise, once you're in the Paleocene and Eocene, that would have affected general dinosaur biology. It would be a world that Cretaceous dinosaurs would still be comfortable in. Stephen Brusset, of the University of Edinburgh adds that dinosaurs had survived well doing a great diversity of things through changing climates for 160 million years. Dinosaurs were still very adaptable at the end of the Cretaceous. That's not the sign of a group that's wasting away to extinction, just waiting for some asteroid to knock them off. It's a sign of a group that still has a lot of evolutionary potentials. Assuming dinosaurs had survived, what factors might have shaped their evolution? Climate change might have perhaps been the first big hurdle, an event known as the Paleocene-Eocene Thermal Maximum 55 million years ago saw average global temperatures reach 8 degrees Celsius hotter than today and rainforests spanning much of the planet. In this hot world with abundant vegetation, perhaps many long-necked sauropods might have grown more rapidly, breeding at a younger age and shrinking in size. Several dwarf sauropods some little bit bigger than a cow, were already known from European islands in the late Cretaceous. The largest titanosaurs of mid-Cretaceous South America, 40 meters long, 131 feet creatures, heavier than two jet aircrafts, were already long gone. Perhaps we would have seen an overall decrease in body size. The gigantic sizes of Mesozoic dinosaurs might have disappeared. Another major event about 34 million years ago at the Oligocene boundary was the separation of South America and Antarctica. This caused a circumpolar current to develop, leading to the formation of the Antarctic ice cap and cooling and drying the world. During the Oligocene and later the Miocene, grasslands then spread across great swaths of the planet. Slender-legged, fast-running herbivorous mammals became common. In the past, you could amble or leap off and hide, but you can't hide in the open grasslands, Holtz says. This is when, in our history, we started to see a burst in the diversity of the hooved, grazing animals and the carnivores that preyed upon them. Dinosaurs had already come with a huge set of evolutionary advantages that took mammals a long time to evolve. 
Darren Nash, a vertebrae paleontologist in Southampton, UK, says that perhaps our alternative timeline, the speedy grass-moving dinosaur equivalent, would be descendants of horned relatives of Triceratops, or bipedal, beaked herbivores akin the Hypsilophodon. Dinosaurs already come with a huge set of evolutionary advantages that it took mammals a long time to evolve, he adds, and would have a head start at adapting to grasslands. Duck-billed hadrosaurs had batteries of up to 1,000 teeth in their jaws, as opposed to the 40-odd teeth a horse has, so could have made a short work at grinding grasses. Dinosaurs also had better eyesight than mammals, with increased color vision, and may have been more adept at spotting danger. Horses and cows have flattened muzzles, useful for cropping tough, low-lying vegetation, so duckbills and sauropods might also have developed squared-off snouts, and sauropod necks might have shortened to aid grazing at their feet. Even closer to the present day, dinosaurs would have had to deal with the various ice ages of the past 2.6 million years. But we know that Cretaceous dinosaurs were living above the Arctic Circle. Maybe in cooler places you would see things like thick and elaborate pelts, covered in fuzz and feathers all the way down to the tips of their toes and tails, said Nash. It would have been difficult for a woolly Tyrannosaurus or Dromaeosaur relatives of Velociraptor to evolve, adds armored dinosaur expert Victoria Arbor of the Royal Ontario Museum of Canada. Maybe we could have even had shaggy and woolly Ceratopsians, Ceratopsians, Ankylosaurus, or Hadrosaurs. There are other adaptations common today, but rare in dinosaurs. Burrowing, for example, says Paul Barrett, a paleontologist at the Natural History Museum in London. It's odd that dinosaurs didn't really do it, as it's a common way of life among lizards and snakes. Given more time, some dinosaurs might have become subterranean specialists, the scaly or feathery equivalent of mammalian moles. The oceans are another realm little explored by dinosaurs. Species such as Spinosaurus were dabbling in Asturian and river environments, and armored Ankylosaurs are often found as fossils in marine sediments and were living along the coastlines. Could Spinosaurus or Ankylosaurs have followed the path of mammalian whales and evolved to live entirely at sea? They might have returned to land to lay eggs or could have eventually given birth to live young at sea, as Ichthylosaurs and Plesiosaurs did. In a world that never lost the dinosaurs on land, petrosaurs in the sky, and ichthyosaurs and mosasaurs at sea, what would have been the fate of birds and mammals? You can imagine a world where islands such as Madagascar, Meridius, and New Zealand are dominated by strange terrestrial pterosaurs. Birds were already diverse in the late Cretaceous. Pterosaur diversity had been really knocked back, says Holt, perhaps because of this. Remaining pterosaurs included the massive toothless Asdrichids, some of which were the size of biplanes with wingspans of 12 meters, 40 feet. For humans, people would have had to create protective places. However, some scientists point to the fact that our own ancestors lived alongside large dangerous animals and had to come up with strategies to survive. People think the Mesozoic world was a continual bloodbath where you get ripped to shreds within seconds, but a lot of the time big predators are sparsely distributed and the world is relatively safe if you stay out of their way. Given that intelligent mammals are possible, could sediment dinosaurs also have evolved? In 1982, Dale Russell, then at the Canadian Museum of Nature in Ottawa, published a paper proposing that an intelligent dinosauroid might one day have evolved. He commissioned a life-size model, which today looks like an alien from a dated sci-fi show, with green skin and huge eyes. His theory was that the carnivorous dinosaur, Trudan, had an unusually large brain and might have been the lineage from which brainy dinosaurs evolved. Dinosaurs equivalent to crows, parrots, or primates with very complex brains and problem-solving abilities might have evolved, agrees one scientist, but he doesn't believe dinosaurs could have ever looked like humans. The pathway to humans was really odd and involved hanging in trees and so forth. Dinosaurs got to bipedally and manipulative hands in a much more reasonable approach. I don't think you would get anything approaching human-level intelligence, says another scientist. You might get big-brained intelligent dinosaurs, but they would still look like dinosaurs. It's anthropomorphic to assume that other kinds of human-like intelligence would have evolved. Maybe some of the small non-avian dinosaurs would have adapted to urban environments, thriving alongside people in the cities. Assuming dinosaurs didn't make it through the last few hundred thousand years and lived alongside humans, could they have survived in the present day? 
The answer seems to be yes, but just as humans hunted mammoths and other megafauna to extinction, our population growth and hunting technologies would inevitably have taken a toll on big dinosaurs as we spread across the globe. There could have been a Pleistocene dinosaur megafaunal extinction event as the humans migrate out of whatever corner of the world they came from, Holtz says. In the present day, in this alternative timeline, perhaps a few species of large herbivorous sauropods and even carnivores similar to T. rex might hang on in protected wildernesses and national parks vast enough to fit their home ranges. They would have to be truly vast wildernesses though, with little human development, in places like the outback in Australia and Alaska. Maybe some of the smallest non-avian dinosaurs would have adapted to urban environments, thriving alongside people in the cities, as pigeons, rats, and seagulls have in our world. Though in our own past, large mammals were mostly wiped out, a few such as elephants and rhinos hang on. So perhaps it's not too much of a stretch to imagine a parallel world where today, you could hop on a dinosaur safari, Jurassic Park style, and enjoy spotting some of them. Cameras and binoculars, get ready.